There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. So have you ever had a day where it turned like upside down on you? You're eating a bowl of cereal and the next thing you know, it's all over your shirt. Or maybe your dog really did eat your homework. Ooh. I mean, it can take just a moment from being happy to going to sad, right? Have you ever had anybody say, turn that frown upside down? My mom used to say that to me. I never liked it. And it's really hard to do that, isn't it? To turn your frown upside down. Anyway, today we're gonna to talk about how you can turn things around by turning to God. So we're gonna look at Isaiah chapter 55, verse seven. So get your Bibles. Let them turn to the Lord. The Lord will show them his tender love. Let them turn to our God. He is always ready to forgive. Okay, so I wonder if you figured out what our new series is gonna be called. It's Upside Down. So welcome to our new series. And if you're thinking that maybe our big idea might have something to do about turning, well, you're right. Because God can turn our sadness into joy. So before I go, I think I would like to try to trick you and maybe turn your brains upside down. I'm gonna give you a riddle. Are you ready for this? Hmm, I wonder. Let's see if you can figure this out. In what month of the year do people eat less food? Do you know? A little tricky? Well, it would be February, of course, because February is the shortest month of the year. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna let you go. And right now we're gonna hear our scripture teach and we're gonna learn all about where our joy comes from. Sometimes when people think about God, they think that he is mean or just kind of waiting for us to fail. Well, I hope you know by now that that's not true. I mean, we've been learning this whole time about different characteristics of God. And today, I want to show you that God is joy. As the creator, he created happiness and celebrations and laughter, and he created us as well. He created that joy. We're gonna look at a couple of pictures here and we're gonna see how they are representing God's joy. Now, the first one is Jesus, and it comes from Matthew 3.17 that says, And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. So, do your mom or dad ever hug you unexpectedly out of nowhere and say that they love you? It's because you bring joy to their lives. And just like that, Jesus brings joy to God's life. He said this right after Jesus was baptized in water, saying that this was his son who he loved so, so much. This next one is when people join God's family. Luke 15, eight through 10 says, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say, rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. God wants everyone to accept Jesus's forgiveness and repent for their sins so that way they can be a part of God's family. I mean, imagine how amazing it is in heaven when someone comes to join God's family. Being saved from our sins and joining into God's family is just one of the ways that God turns our sadness into joy. And that is our big idea for today. Now the next one is people. Psalm 27, 23 says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Now, as the creator, he created everything. But one thing that's super important and kind of special that he created was people. He made us in his image and we have a spirit like God's spirit. He knows what is best for us and he wants what is best for us as well. So that's why it brings him such joy when we follow him and what is right. So I have a, uh, a nice little large jug of water here. 
And um, we're gonna talk about happiness, things that make us happy. So we can imagine this water jug is like us and the things inside is uh, like our happiness. What are some things that make you happy? On vacation to Six Flags or something, or maybe you're gonna have a great dessert and you're looking forward to it. Maybe you get to hang out with your friends one day. And, uh, and those things make you happy, right? But what if those things are taken away from you, right? What if uh, you get sick and you can't have that dessert, you gotta take medicine, it doesn't taste good and you're not feeling well. Maybe if it starts storming outside so you can't see your friend or maybe your friend moves away or maybe vacation plans get canceled. So all these things affect things that you're happy and now all that happiness is turned upside down and poured out just like that and it makes a mess. Well, what we're gonna talk about today is how happiness, while it's not a bad thing, it is good, it makes us feel good, but it's often dependent on our circumstances. But we're gonna talk about how the joy that God gives is something that we bring with us to every situation. Just like our big idea, which says, God turns our sadness into joy. So even in moments where a sad situation comes up or our happiness is taken, uh, we can bring God's joy into that situation. So I'm gonna show you guys a cool uh, science experiment that's super easy to do. All you need is a, a bottle or in this case, a large water jug. You need some, some water, of course, and you just need some speed. But we're gonna do this outside because we need a little more space. Check this out. Here we go. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, okay. Pretty cool, not a drop on me. So guys, wasn't that a cool experiment? So this is called centripetal force. When the bottle is moving so fast and the water is moving at the same speed, it doesn't fall out with the speed of gravity. And so this is going to help remind us of the joy that God gives us. When things get chaotic or things feel like they turn upside down, that joy is still with us. So in the Bible, it says that joy is actually what's called a fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that means it is something that God grows inside of us when we choose to spend time with Him, which means our relationship with God is so key to having His joy in our lives. So what I want to do is I want to pray with you guys and I want to ask that God would fill you up with His joy. So in every situation, whether it is a good situation, a difficult situation, or a great situation, we can bring God's joy into it that will help us get through it and uh, also help us even be an encouragement to other people. So let's close our eyes and let's pray. God, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for uh, your goodness and for the joy that you give us, Lord. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to draw closer to you, help us draw closer to your heart to know more of who you are, God, we thank you so much for uh, your joy, God, and this joy really is uh, faith and hope in you. So God, I pray that you continue to fill us with your hope and your faith, God, so we can trust in you and know that in every situation, God, we will uh, provide a, a good outcome when we choose to trust in you, God, because we know you're in control of every situation and we give it all to you. Help us be filled with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so I'm super excited because normally I do the teach or I do the prayer, but today I'm doing the game. And the game is disgusting. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. Now, I don't know if you've been watching us for very long, but a few years ago, my daughter spit some juice on me. It was like a spit. It was disgusting. And I've never really quite forgotten that. So now that I have this opportunity for a gross, disgusting game, I'm definitely going to reach out to her. So I don't know if you've ever seen those boxes where you have to put your hands into and feel around what's inside of it and figure out what it is. That's what we're doing today. So I have a mushed up marshmallow and then I have some Caesar salad. All hail Caesar. Yes, and I'm going to stick it into a box. Are you ready? And I'm going to make my daughter put her hands in it, and then I'm going to laugh. All right, she's outside, so let me go get her. I'm so excited. So you're the first person I've asked to play this game. Look at her face. I'm so excited. Um, 
Do you remember that time that you did that spit take on me? And you covered me with red gross juice. Oh. Oh. Well, I remember it too. So when this opportunity came forward, I thought maybe you'd be the perfect person to ask to play this game. So what I need you <laughs> I love it. What I need you to do is you're gonna use this little hole right here and you're gonna put your hand in. What do you got on your hands? Okay, no watches, no nothing. Okay, perfect, perfect, because we don't want you to get it dirty, possibly, because we don't know what's in there, or you don't know what's in there. Both hands or? No, just one, just one. Okay. You just one. Okay, so I have a bowl in there right now, and it's filled with something, and I'd like for you to put your hand in there and try to figure out what it is. <laughs> uh, anytime you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little is scared. It, is it, is it, um... Alive? It's gonna bite you. No, there's nothing alive. Oh, look at her face. No, there's nothing alive. You can't do. Maybe the last one we could do that. <laughs> oh, I thought you scared me. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. You don't know? Did you touch it? No. <laughs> it's a little glass bowl filled with something. You don't scare me. What is it? I can't tell you. You can't tell. I, look the at bowl. the people so they can see you. <laughs> Marshmallows? Yes, it's marshmallows. <laughs> oh my gosh. You made a jump for nothing for marshmallows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Now, yes, see, it's mashed up marshmallows. Nothing. It felt slimy. It did. You ready? Boom. Okay. No. It's, it's nothing to be afraid of. Crazy, crazy woman. Okay, you ready? <gasps> oh, is there another one? thing? Yes. We're doing more? Yeah, just two. Okay. Oh, calm down. <laughs> this one's my favorite. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Don't scare me. <laughs> it scared me. Okay. Look in the face and the camera. <laughs> what the heck? Want to guess? Uh, it's, uh... It's like granular. And granular? Oh, it shouldn't be. If it's granular, that means it went bad. Whoops, my bad. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Can you feel it? Is it like icing? Icing. Oh, that's a good. Or icing, huh? Almost okay. like sugar, but it's like. Mm, I guess maybe it went bad. It is. Um, it is uh, Caesar salad. All hail Caesar. That was it. Oh, and you love Caesar salad, oh, right? That's so gross. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, well, while Bethany cleans herself up, be grateful I didn't do a spit take on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to, I have a joke for you. It smells so bad. It does smell bad oh. if you're not a Caesar fan. But anyway, I have, um, I have a joke for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so our whole series is all about being upside down, flipping things around. So don't you love it when a joke kind of, you think it's gonna go one way and then it flips around and you're like, oh, that's clever and funny at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my joke. What do you call a snowman on rollerblades? Frosty the ski man? No, a snowmobile. <laughs> Isn't that funny, a snowmobile? Do you see how it's mobile it, and, and it's snow? and. Okay, all right, so maybe it was a little corny, but it's funny, it's still funny. All right, next week, we have more to learn about flipping things and going upside down, so I hope you'll join us next week. Bye, and maybe I'll have more dastardly deeds to do. <laughs>